Momentarily, we're going to be going uh, to orbit and space shuttle Discovery. Uh, the crew is standing by to visit with us, including Minnesota's own Karen Nyberg. We're waiting for the cue from NASA for that visit. Once again, we appreciate uh, the cooperation of NASA on this Sunday afternoon to make this happen. Discovery, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. WCCO Radio, this is Houston. Please call Discovery for voice check. Discovery, this is WCCO Radio. How do you hear me? We got you loud and clear. How do you hear us? We hear you just fine. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Karen, you've had dreams of uh, space flight, Karen Iberg, uh, for a long, long time. Is it everything you thought it would be? I think it's everything and more. It's been a blast. Uh, the uh, launch yesterday was incredible. When we were waiting on the pad, it actually seemed like one of the sims, but uh, once the boosters lit, definitely was not a sim, and it's been a lot of fun. Minnesota's own Karen Nyberg joining us. How has your training compared to the real thing so far? Actually, the training is very, very close. I've been surprised. Um, we've done a lot of um, work today with the robotic arm, and it's all the training we had prepared us exactly how we needed to be prepared. And once we got into orbit yesterday, all of our um, post-insertion tasks that we had to do, we had trained... Um, so it went very smoothly, and everything, the training is wonderful. Karen, tell us about the launch sequence. It must be quite a ride. Yeah, it definitely is quite a ride. Like I said, in the sim, uh, we do have a motion-based simulator, but it just got a little bit of motion. But once the solid rocket boosters lit yesterday, uh, you really feel it. It's a kick in the pants. And also you feel the G's, which you don't feel in the simulator. And uh, once you hit Miko, then all of a sudden you're floating, and it's, it's pretty darn cool. We have a question from a student at the school in Henning, Minnesota. I am Christina Elstrom. I am an eighth grader at Henning School, and this is my question. What is the most important thing to remember when running the robotics arm? The most, that's a very good question, actually. The uh, most important thing to, to remember when running the arm is to watch clearances with the structure that you're working around because you really don't want to hit something with it. What do you expect to be the most difficult part of the mission for you and the entire crew? difficult part will be find, uh, actually taking the time and realizing where we are and getting to the window and taking a good look at the earth. What has been your role with the inspection of discovery after liftoff for potential damage to the heat shield? Can you say it one more time? What has been your role as far as the inspection goes of the orbiter after liftoff? I know the inspection of the heat shield is, is very important. That's correct. Today we used the robotic arm and just the, the camera that's on the end effector and did um, just a quick inspection as much as we could with um, what we have the orbiter boom sensor system, which is the big um, inspection uh, pole that we use, and uh, we just did a quick survey of the, as much of the leading edge as we could, and it all looked great as far as we could see. I know you're very busy, but how's the view? We've been taking a couple seconds when we get a chance and looking out and pointing out different things, and I've seen a couple of rises and sunsets. It's incredible. Is there time built in during the mission to relax and enjoy the view, take some photos? Is there downtime? We do actually 
actually have towards the end of the mission, we'll get some off time scheduled. So many family and friends made the trip to Florida for the launch. What do you want to say to those people, those family and friends that made that journey? got to see a lot of them uh, from a distance and wave at them, and it was great to see them. Um, I saw some pictures from the reception that was held, and it, it looks like everybody had a wonderful time. So thank everybody so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed the launch. I'm sure it was beautiful. And I know uh, you're very, very busy. There's an, uh, important objectives, including installing this new module, this uh, multi-billion dollar Japanese science module. Uh, tell us what that laboratory will do. Japanese laboratory, like you said, is the large laboratory is going to be the biggest module that we have on the space station, and it will be primarily for science. And it's, it's one neat thing about it is it's going to have an exposed facility, so some of the science experiments will be able to spend some time out in the vacuum of space. And I know the entire crew is also going to the International Space Station with uh, some important plumbing work to do. Tell us about that. much I can say about it other than the toilet is broken. I probably know about as much as you do. We are bringing some spare parts, and uh, we'll be handing them the parts over to our Russian colleagues, and they'll be working on it. Thanks so much for your time, Karen Nyberg. Uh, congrats to you and the crew on a successful launch, and have a safe mission. Thank you, and hello to everybody in Minnesota.